I am your friend, Dr. Charles Apoki. This video is purposely directed to our children. We have children in Nigeria, in the diaspora. A lot of them don't want to rise up to compete with their mates. A lot of them are just satisfied with the comfort and the successes of their parents. A lot of them are plagued by anger and frustration of the problems their parents had. Maybe the divorce your parents experienced, maybe the hardship you experienced from them, or the inadequacies of your parents. I want to talk about the Omolara anointing. Omolara Omotosho, I can't remember the husband's name now, is a Nigerian athlete. I am old enough to be her father. I suspect at least my first three children she will be her age mate or older than her. Omalara received the baton with a gap of about 15 meters ahead of her from the last person that gave it to her in the four by 400 meters mixed relay race in the All African Games at Accra, Ghana. Omalara could have sat down and started complaining about the delay in the batting reaching her hand. She could have started blaming the last leg that ran a male for not being able to compete with his contemporaries. She would have started complaining about President Tinibu. She, I suspect she is based outside Nigeria. She would have, could have compared where she is based with the things in Nigeria. But she saw the need to make her mark in her own generation competing with her mates. And she was surrounded by a cloud of witnesses and she dared not fail. She knows the legacy of Nigeria in athletics and she did not want to be the generation that would drop the baton. I could see this mother of two children. I saw her running and pursuing the Boswanan girl who was ahead of her. She overtook her and won the gold medal. She converted silver medal to gold medal. I was not handed over a very good baton at on time. My father was illiterate, as I've told you. My father was a refuse collector. All my elder brothers failed woefully, woefully. I had enough to discourage me. I had family disputes in my family. My mother and my father would quarrel on my face, on my right side, you will see a mark. The day that mark was put on my face by my mother, police came to our house to arrest my mother. My father brought the police. I had to go to police station different times with my mother because of family disputes between my father and my mother. I saw my mother smoke cigarettes. My mother sold alcohol. I saw all things to discourage me. I used to sell akamu pap, corn milk, before going to school in the afternoon. I hawked firewood. I sold cow skin. There is hardly anything I did not do to make money. To be able to buy clothes to wear 
and buy little provisions. I used to use my school fees to buy fresh fish from one man called Oviegara and go to the bush where the College of Education worry is now and cut trees and firewood and palm leaves to dry the fish so that my mother could sell so that I could multiply the money. I knew I needed to catch up with my generation. My generation was far ahead of me. I needed to work hard to catch up with my generation. When I was to go to medical school, I asked my father for money. He gave me 30 naira. Transport from Wari to Ibadan was 14 naira. He didn't bother about school fees. He didn't bother about books. But I had saved 300 naira from my teaching appointment. So I paid for my accommodation. I paid for books with my money. I was just 20 years old. And I struggled through medical school because my father told me he wanted me to become a medical doctor. There were times I had no meals. I borrowed code for matriculation. But I had a dream beyond my father beyond Nigeria, beyond the failures of my family. I had enough reasons to stop. In fact, one day I stood at the gate of UBTH, University of Benin Teaching Hospital, with my wife. Then she was a student nurse. And she had gone to withdraw three naira from her account to add to the five naira I had. Remember, transport fare from Benin to Ibadan should be about 10 naira. But I had only about 10 naira or 8 naira in my hand and I was going to start school and exams were coming. Despite everything, I still passed. I still became a medical doctor. Today you are listening to me. My father is not alive. My mother is not alive. My brothers are not alive. I'm the only one remaining. If I did not run with my baton, my generation would have left me behind. What excuses are you giving? You are going to compete with your generation, particularly those of you in the diaspora. As a black man, you need to do 10 times better than a white man or even an Asian for you to be taken seriously. If you don't take yourself seriously and take your life seriously, and you think you are doing your, your, you are harming your parents, you are going to regret it. You are going to regret it. Your mates will make mockery of you. Your mates will call you the N word if you continue with your lousy lifestyle. Young girl, your mates will employ you if you don't get angry and run the race of your life and pursue your generation. Catch up with them and beat them. Today, my children are better models of me. They are living their lives. They don't take care of me. I take care of myself because I ran my race. Run like a Molara. Run like a Molara. Stand on the podium. Let the national anthem of your family, of your country, be rendered because of you. Do something for yourself. Do something for your nation. Do something for your race. Do something for humanity. Do something for the kingdom of God. Listen and listen well. If you come to this world and you live without contributing your quota, without maximizing your potentials, without fulfilling your destiny, you are a parasite and a liability, and a shame. Stand up, man. Fasten your belt. Jack up your pants. And pursue your destiny. When they stood on the podium, the coaches did not stand with them. Their parents did not stand with them. The president did not stand with them. They stood there, received the honor, the glory, and the glamour. I pray for you, every demon of distraction, 
every evil spirit of discouragement, every spirit of anger, every spirit of laziness, every spirit of docility, every spirit that confuses you, I rebuke it and I cast it out of your life and I prophesy upon you, wake up, O ye sleeper. Run the race of your life. A new anointing is coming upon you and it is the anointing of righteousness and excellence. Go and succeed. I am the area grandfather, Dr. Charles Apuki. This message has blessed you. Send it to as many of your children as possible. Share it to as many families as possible. Let's wake up the spirit of success and pursuit like as Amolara did. She did not give any excuses. There are so many excuses for failure, but no good reason. God bless you. Send me a message on plus 234-70-5213. Six seven six three. You can join my WhatsApp mentorship group, and you can join my April first Easter Monday program on succeeding in hard times. God bless you.